Having begun by the Spirit, are you brought to maturity by the flesh? Do you understand what Paul's saying? I know there's those who would twist that interpret another way. Having begun by the Spirit. So your beginning was the Spirit. That Spirit's eternal. Now you turn into the flesh, thinking you're going to mature the Spirit. It's complete. It's to be worked out. And let the flesh go. And it's human efforts. The flesh. I keep using that term, the flesh, all the time. What's it mean? Well, it breaks down to a particular race, your culture, your second religious creeds, and your opinion of gender, male, female. Of course, I'll throw in Galatians 6 talking about the byproducts of the flesh. For example, byproducts of the flesh. You might think in yourself, well, I could never commit adultery. But you, you need to text. The Pharisees thought that. They could never commit adultery. They were keeping the law. That's why I commit adultery. Yet Jesus says, You have said, but I say unto you, if you looked upon a woman with lust in your heart, you have already committed it. And then he goes the next step saying, I never commit a murder. He said, if you hated your brother, you murdered him. What's he saying in that moment? The key word is potential. Know that your potential to commit murder. If you haven't thought, and you deny that thought, some point in life you may very well commit murder, real murder. Or you may cheat on your husband or your wife, thinking you could never do that. The potential to get into the sin nature. He just says he has no sin nature. Otherwise, you weren't born on this planet. You come from another planet. You didn't come into the loins of Adam, fallen. But you were supposed to be manifest as the Son of God, and the God would have worked that out of you, your human spirit. The potential of that human spirit complete and worked it out to a period of time in a creative material world. That's where we mess up. The flesh interprets the flesh. <laughs> There's nothing about the flesh that's good. Paul said, In me, that is in my flesh, there's no good. Yet we want to say that there's something good about me. I'm a good American. My culture is the better culture. We don't eat things that shouldn't be eaten. I mean, this thing out of the price, I don't think I have to do that, put out a good video on it. Maybe this is it. Breaking it, up, breaking it all down. The flesh. Your race. Well, you would say, well, if you're a Russian, you're bad. Or Chinese, you're bad. But if you're an American, you're good. It's a melting pot of the world. Every race, culture, sector, religious creed, companions of gender, and some over 50 other genders they're coming up with today. We're pop parts of everything. It's the melting pot of the world. It's the flesh. All these different races, all these different cultures expressed here. You can go by Chinese, by Italian food, European food, Asian food. Then you have our American culture, American hot dog, you know, apple pie. A lot of these things we claim to be our culture come from all these other cultures that got adopted into our culture, American culture. That could be broken down. I think I got writings on that. I have to pour it into this. All the different cultures, this melting pot. Secular and religious creeds. Secular creeds. You see it today more than any time. Those trying to advocate socialism into a democracy, 
a republic under our constitution. We got away from all that. We don't have socialism. We don't have social, socialism here. You want that? Go, go back to Russia. Go back to China. Dictatorships. Go back to Venezuela. If that's what you want. But we tolerate, we allow it. Freedom of speech. You put it out there, everybody puts it out there, and you trying to get 51% majority to vote for it, and then you get it. You see it happen today. There used to be laws against that. Remember McCarthyism? They went to the extreme. Anybody who was a communist, my God, you would label it, it would ruin your whole life. Any hint of socialism in your speech or your talk or your lifestyle or Nazism. You see it today, he's fling these terms around, Nazism, you're a socialist, you're a communist, he's trying to become a dictator or a king. We got away from King George, that's why we came here. Come under the dictates of a king. We don't have a king. Voted in president by the 51% majority. And we've seen what that majority changes from one generation to the next. And sometimes you get those of a party like Kennedy without going in all about his life. They won that election, Democrats. But he didn't prove to be what the Democrats wanted. And he had him put down. Don't fit the needs of the Democratic Party and their ideologies and opinions of life. And you get some uh, Republicans in there. They, ain't, they don't live up to being a Republican. Nor do they live up to a, what they call conservatives. Religious conservatism today has hardly any meaning at all. What's a conservative? What's a liberal? That's from right of a now room. Find out both are bad. There's not a true conservative, nor are they a true uh, liberal. They come into what you call the new millennial generation. Progressives. And the distortion of this word progressive and this idea of millennium right this religious idea of millennium and you get all kind of controversy when it comes to this word millennium I got a whole series of videos on millennium they're what they call replacement theology saying that the church replaced the millennial kingdom offered to the Jewish people because they rejected their Messiah, their king. That's their king was postponed. Some say no, they will never get that kingdom. That kingdom will be ushered in by the church. Catholicism strongly believes that. All millennials, they believe that the millennium will be ushered in by the Pope and, and Catholicism. It will be a utopia on earth, put down all evil, to Catholicism. But today, it's proven to be the most evil thing on this earth. With the Pope that they got, embracing all the world religions into one. It fits what the Antichrist is going to do. He has no particular interest in any particular race, any particular culture, secular or religious creeds, or even gender. His goal is to destroy all flesh. There's your term flesh again. He wants to destroy every race, culture, second religious creed, and all genders. He wants to do away with humanity. He's angelic. Thinking the angels should have been sons of God. Then you get to twisting the source of scripture, trying to say that the angels are the son of God based on Genesis chapter 6 or, or what's expressed in the book of uh, Job. Or the angels or the sons of God came before, with Lucifer came before God. They may think themselves to be the son of God. They're not. 
We are unique being, sons of God. We were created in Christ. I go into great detail on that. So, so much more. You know, I just later I'll put this label this in my file there. But getting into the definition of the word flesh. Having begun by the spirit, or you brought to maturity by the flesh. The spirit has all this in you. It's the mind of Christ, which contains all the totality of wisdom and knowledge of God. And the true definition of what true godliness is, godliness is that you were supposed to be sons of God, not manifest as sons and daughters of men, the flesh. And that iniquity vision to the third and fourth generation. 